Hello there and welcome back to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen video. Today we're going to look at a very old fountain pen. I might even call it vintage. Like me, it's over 50. It is the Orienta and it is a German-made student model piston filler. This pen comes courtesy of viewer Joel Terrell. Thanks so much Joel for providing it. And so let's take a look at this pen right now. So I thought I'd do an unboxing of this Orienta pen that came from Joel when he sent me the Ancient Civilizations uh, Fully Wen 2055. This was in the box as well as a little added feature for me to look at. And as far as I can tell, uh, I'm going to do a little bit more research on these pens, but these are made in Germany and it looks like they're in the early to mid 50s and they were kind of uh, student pens for German school children to use. And it also looks to me like this pen um, has never been inked and it's very old so it's been sitting in this box for a while and it's oxidized this uh, little ring has started to come off and there's corrosion on the clip as you can see it says orienta right there engraved into the plastic with uh, gold paint infill and it is a piston filler and it unscrews, the cap unscrews with one, one and a bit turns. And you can see why I think that this has never been inked because that cork is just perfect there. And the piston works beautifully. It worked the first time out of the box. Joel said he got a, a bunch of these in, a, in a, some kind of a auction or a flea market or something like that and uh, wanted me to have one of these. The section doesn't come off, it's all molded plastic um, and there's a, a number five or smaller size nib, gold plated, it says Nima, Ni, Niwa on it and there's looks like an eight in there. I haven't uh, taken a good look at this and there's a a non-finned, looks like ebonite feed there. So I thought I'd uh, take a first look at that out of the box before I do a little bit of work on it, uh, see if I can polish it up. That's all just uh, uh, gold plated uh, metal, white metal. Uh, so I'm not sure how much I can polish it up from that corrosion, but uh, we'll polish up the body and um, I'll come back on camera and do a an inking of this pen. Very cool thing. Thank you, Joel, for sending that. I did also want to show how this pen looks very similar to another pen I'm going to review shortly. All I have to do is find it. It looks very similar to this Pelican M200 that I'm working on. This M200 is a, uh, forgive me for saying this, but it's vintage. It's vintage for me. It's about 30 to 40 years old. Um, I'm just guessing, and but that's based on who owned the pen and when he owned it. Um, I believe he got this in the 80s, the early 80s. But you can see that the Pelican M200 and this German uh, student pen from Orienta are the kind, the same kind of look. They're both piston fillers, they're both black, and uh, they're both very small. And the bodies look very similar as well with that same kind of ink window, relatively the same size nibs, the same size and shape, relatively 
sections and the uh, piston filler end knobs look similar as well. I'm going to uh, work on this Orienta and we'll come back and ink it up and I'll be doing a separate video on this Pelican M200 and maybe we'll do a comparison of the two, see how they write. I have no idea. And we're back with the Orienta. Since you just saw it in its raw condition, I have done some work on this pen. I also did a little research on this pen's history. There is little to go on, but it seems this pen was made between roughly 1935 and the early 1950s in Germany as an inexpensive student fountain pen. There was a large lot of new old stock Orienta pens still in boxes like this one for sale on FP Geeks about five years ago. This might have been from that lot. They also seem to resemble a Certo brand, that's C-E-R-T-O brand pens, which became the brand Reform in the later 50s. I know very little about these pens, but it is certain that they were made to be inexpensive writers. First, I removed the cap band as it was already falling off, and I took the nib and the feed out. Actually, it came out very, very simply. I also unscrewed the cap finial, which removed the clip as well, and that came off very easily as well. This is not an expensive or precious pen, so I tried some things that I would not normally try on a vintage pen. I dropped the nib, the clip, and the cap band in a tiny amount of Tarnex. This is a harsh chemical made for removing tarnish from sterling silver, silver plate, platinum, copper, and gold. These pieces contain none of those elements, and yet I thought it might just clear up some of the oxidation. So I left them in the solution for about one minute and then rinsed them off thoroughly. It actually worked pretty well. As you can see from this cap band here, it's not shiny by any means, but it's uh, nowhere near as oxidized as it was. And the clip, although it still shows some, some oxidation on it, looks a lot better than it did. Then I added a touch of cyanoacrylate glue to both sides of this cap band groove and slid the cap band back on. It is not really a, a good fit because I can still feel that sharp edge there. And that's because the celluloid, and I believe this pen is celluloid, uh, has shrunk over the years. The pen is super light and the edge of this cap is almost sharp. It is so thin. The nib is some sort of very thin steel and it looks to be gold plated, but I'm not sure what that is. It might just be paint. But it's the plate, if it's plate, is very, very thin. The nib is interesting and I want to get a close up so you can see it. It is a folded nib. There is no tipping material at all on this and the tines are just folded back like they took a machine and folded back those two points on themselves into a curl. You'll see that this makes for a unique writing experience. The feed is interesting as well. You'll notice that it has no fins on it at all and it is made of ebonite, what we old people used to call bakelite. And it actually shined up very nicely with a little buffing. The nib and feed just push in and pull out with ease. With the nib and the feed out, I was able to get access to the inner chamber. And with a Q-tip and a little silicone grease, I was able to ink up the inside walls of that barrel. And even though the piston was sliding fairly nicely, even after so many years of being in a box, uh, the silicone grease made it move very, very nicely and very, very smoothly. Let's look at the parts of this pen. The finial is a rounded point and then tapers up to the band that is the clip. And the clip is very springy and very usable. The cap is straight until it reaches that cap band and then it tapers down to the barrel. The barrel is straight until we get to the piston knob, which tapers down, and then we have a rounded pointed end to that piston knob. If you look carefully here, I don't know whether this will show on camera or not, but this barrel is really wavy. Maybe I can show it through light. 
You can see that there's waves all the way up and down. Same thing with the cap. There's a wave there, but mostly on the, on the barrel. And that's from the celluloid shrinking over time. Just a side note here for acoustic guitar aficionados. Many vintage acoustic guitars have had the same problem of shrinking celluloid with the pickguards. Guitars like vintage Martins and Gibsons were fitted with celluloid pickguards, and when the celluloid shrinks, the wood doesn't, and the glued-on pickguard pulls at the wood, causing the wood to split. The classic pickguard crack seen on hundreds of old Martins. But I digress. And don't bitch at me, maybe you learned something by accident, eh? Weimar, this is for your benefit, would you kindly wake up? So, as we see, the cap comes off with slightly over one turn, and the pen posts very deeply and very securely. The pen is too short to write with, uh, unposted, and I think the pen is designed to write with in this manner. And because it's so light, that cap doesn't backweight the pen at all. And it's actually fairly comfortable in the hand at that length. These screw threads here are rather pointy and can get uncomfortable in that section, concave classic section, but it's very, very short. And uh, so finding a comfortable place on this pen to write with was a bit of a challenge. So now we'll look at some measurements, some size comparisons, before I come back with a writing sample. Please stay tuned after the writing sample as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like about this pen. Okay, we're back with the writing sample portion of this pen review, and this is the Orienta. Student. This is, I'm going to guess, a fine nib. And the ink today is Hiroshizuku Takesumi. So let's check the wetness on this. So it's, it's a fairly wet pen. And line variation, this is very interesting. The pen actually flexes quite a bit, but that nib feels fragile. But you notice that it's very thin, very fine in the horizontal direction, and quite thick in the vertical direction. So without any pressure, it will give you line variation just naturally. It's a very interesting writing experience. This folded nib is unlike anything I've ever written with before. It really feels like a vintage writing experience. Because of the blunt end, the folded nib, the pen writes thick vertically and thin on the horizontal. But it doesn't feel like a stub nib at all. There's a lot of flex, but the pen will railroad fairly easily. And it took me a while to get used to how it writes. It's, uh, I'd almost say awkward. So let's listen to it.
and for reverse writing, it's drying up. It does do it a little bit. And for some quick writing, it uh, the feed seems to keep up, but it's the angle of the pen that you have to get just right. Um, and that's one of the things I'm sort of learning with with this pen. So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, first, what I don't care for is the size of this pen. It's just too small to be comfortable, and I have medium-sized hands. It's definitely for smaller or younger hands. I also don't like the flimsy kind of feel of the nib. It feels like I'm going to break it if I push it. But overall, what I really like is the almost nostalgic feeling of stepping into the past. It is like writing with a quill for the first time. I found myself being transported back to a time when every desk in the classroom had a hole in the top right for your bottle of ink. Notebooks were smudged and stained, and pieces of blotter paper were under your desk lid. enough to have experienced a classroom that old, but you can really experience that age and that writing style with this pen. Your writing takes on an entirely different character. And how great is that? In all, a very, very cool pen and very, very cool writing experience. Thanks go out again to Joel Terrell for providing this pen for me. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification of any videos posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.